Welcome to CK3 and the complete and utter nonsense, which is going to be the historical correctness of this save. <laughs> Name of the game is role playing. And in this specific series, it's going to be a fantasy dynasty that I'm going to create starting from 1066 in Lübeck. Yeah, we're going to start in Lübeck, just south of Denmark. And uh, we're going to have quite a few mods to extend the immersion and also bring a little bit of an extra flavor to the game overall. But exactly where the story will end up and that is up to the characters really and their unique traits. Because the main focus is to try and do what our characters would likely do rather than playing in the most efficient way while typically painting the map your favorite color. We are gonna play as the Elven Dynasty. It is originally from Jels in Denmark, right in here, just southwest of the Barony of Colling, right down here somewhere where I point toward. And uh, yeah, with their family name dating back to 904, actually, with the uh, Sami descendants. Yeah, they actually originate in Sami like 250 years before that, where we are gonna start our adventures. So that's pretty cool, a little backstory here, but they are, uh, by all accounts, of course, by now, after 250 years, established themselves as a Dane inside Denmark. Our first player character is named Toge, and um, as you can see here, I actually said that he was a Baron of Obenro. Now, that, that's, that's, that's not how his story begins. Now, his story begins, of course, in Yeltsin with his family, where he started out as a lowborn without any reputation whatsoever. <laughs> But he managed to uh, find some relations throughout his adventures as a Viking where he, he got to meet the Prince of Denmark who is actually the uh, owner of Schleswig down here. And by knowing him and being on a lot, of, a lot of adventures with the Prince, he actually got, just 10 years ago or so, he actually got to become the Baron of Obenro. And that is definitely not something to be ashamed of, but it, it, is, it is not what his goals were in life. Now, Toki is a very ambitious kind of guy, so this is not the end for him. So 10 years later, and been a baron for 10 years, he, he decided that something had to be done. He had to move up in the world, also for his family's sake, which we will meet later on. So what he did, and no one really knows exactly how he did it, but he managed to overthrow the Count of Lübeck, or the Count uh, Budijovic, his name is. And um, he did it with just a few soldiers. As a, as a baron, he didn't really have a lot. He had a couple of hundreds of soldiers, but that was also all of it. <laughs> now, he overthrew Budajovic and his loyalist Polybian family, and he basically just threw them over the border into Hamburg because, get out of here, this is my territory now, he was thinking. So, <laughs> and, and, and all of this just happened, you know, during the night of the 15th of September, in, uh, in the in the God's year of 1066. So, <laughs> in all the Danish kingdom, all the Polybian folk in Lübeck really know what to make of it, but that is kind of where the story of the Elven dynasty really starts as a family house. Count Toge, well, now he is a count, has moved into the castle in, uh, in Lübeck. And together with him, of course, is his family, yeah, his spouse is right here, and also his. Um, I think the. I think she's actually seventeen, so it is a uh, a daughter, but she is now kind of of age. So yeah, he he, he actually met up with his uh, spouse quite young and got a, a daughter really early on. But he do not have, you know, a direct player heir, so to speak, in terms of a son. But. That might not be too bad. I mean, a daughter is always good. It's just, you know, Tog is okay with that. But for today, we kind of do need to find out who is Toge exactly. As a, you know, as, as, as us, we need to figure out who is Toge, what kind of person is he, what kind of family do we have, and all those kind of good things. So there is not going to be a lot of gameplay today. Most of, our, most of this is going to be looking at things, setting up things, looking at some of the problematic stuff that Toge has to deal with. Because as a new count, 
you know, just taking over a new county is... That's kind of overthrowing the old one, right? That's kind of odd. That's kind of a uh, odd situation to be in. There could be problems with that to deal with. So let's check out Toge first. So let's check out exactly who Toge is in terms of traits and, you know, different kinds of things we can look at here. So, well, Count Toge is brave. He got the personality brave, which definitely makes sense in terms of, you know, the decisions he had made so far. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he definitely were brave to try and overthrow a count as a baron. That was, that was a brave thing to do. He is also wrathful. So if anyone is trying to, let's say, try and kill his wife, well, I wouldn't like to be that character, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so he is a wrathful character. He is also ambitious, which is also very clear to us by now. I mean, he started as a lowborn, went up to become a baron through the Prince of Denmark, and now, by himself and a couple of hundred soldiers, became a Count of Lübeck, outside of Denmark, you must say as well. That's, that's kind of ambitious to me. <laughs> Now, he is also a tough soldier, so he had an education as a young, and also through his adventures as a Viking. Yeah, I would say he's definitely a Viking. This guy is, by, or by all means, a Viking. But it is getting to the end of the Viking Age right now, so he might have to change some of his ways. He's also a Blade Master, so he's definitely adept at, you know, killing people in combat, so that's, that's quite nice. He's a Marshal. He was the marshal in Slesby while he was a baron in Obenro, so that also makes sense quite a bit. He is a gallant person, which is kind of odd to be when you're also wrathful, but to the people that is nice to him, he is definitely also nice to them. So uh, <laughs> that, is not, um, that is not something to be shamed upon, I suppose. He's also a winter soldier, so he got a pretty good commander trait in terms of at least where we are in the world. I mean, the northern Germany is not very known to be very cold, but uh, it's it's always nice to have something of an advantage in the snow, so to speak. And he is a Viking raider, right? I mean, that makes sense. He, he is definitely a Viking. Now, this is part of a mod called, uh, I actually don't remember, fa fam family or something like that. Uh, but it will show us. It's basically just a fame trade. It's going to give us a sign who is our original family lineage. And uh, I, th I think it's a pretty cool one. We'll get more into it later on. And also he is the, oh, I hate that word, Patrilineage founder. I think that's how it's pronounced. And probably most important of all of these traits is the physical trait of having powerful lungs. So I guess he can run all day or, well, in this case, he, he kind of is resistant to diseases, which is kind of nice. And also got a bit of vassal opinion for plus five. So that is kind of the traits and the... Uh, fame traits and all that kind of jazz that we have to deal with. His attributes are, of course, you know, in in terms of him being a Viking, very very high in prowess and also very high in mathrial, um, a martial. <laughs> Sorry, mathrial, martial. But overall, he's a he's a very good character. I would say he he doesn't really lack anything in terms of uh, being a fighter, being a martial, being a soldier. But now when he's a count, he might have to change his ways quite a bit. But how much can he change? That's the question. We have to remember who we are playing as. But he also knows, I mean Tolgu, do know that things might change now. His Viking ways might come to an end. So let's take a quick look at the other family members. I think that is very important to do. As we can see, our spouse up here is called Emma, and she is actually, she kind of like us, which is nice. But let's go into her and check her out as well. Now, I, I forgot to mention that he is 45, so he was born in 1021, which is, I mean, as a, as a 45 year old, it, it might still be doable to get a child, another child, but I mean, we do have a player here, so we got that done, <laughs> at least, while we still could. But let's check out our uh, wife. She is also 45. I actually didn't know that. But yeah, she's also 45. She is a lowborn. She's also from Yelts. At least I'm roleplaying that. 
<laughs> she does not. I think I think she will have attributes when we actually start the game or unpause the game. I think she will have attributes. So it's actually a little bit uh, a little bit stupid looking at her, but I don't really care what her attribute is per se. I was more interested in seeing her personality traits. She's content, she's diligent, which is that's actually a kind of a good trait uh, in terms of matching up with us, I think. Content is not not the best, probably, but uh, patient as well. Okay, so she's kind of a learning kind of character, and she is a mastermind philosopher. Very interesting indeed. So, since we don't know the attributes, there is not a whole lot we can look at here, to be honest. But uh, it does look like she's bisexual, which is kind of interesting. What, what are we? What are we? We are hetero. Okay, fair enough. So, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the player air here. Now, same deal, we cannot see the attributes because, again, unpaused. Uh, or we need to unpause the game to see that. But she is a diligent. She is fickle. Oh boy. <laughs> so she changed her mind quite a bit, that's gonna be an interesting one. And she's also patient. So she got most of her mother's traits. She actually don't have any of ours, or Torgis, which is kind of interesting. She is a uh, negotiator, a charismatic negotiator. That that might come in handy later on. So actually, not a bad character to play maybe uh, later on, because now we are a count, we probably need to do a bit of negotiation rather than fighting. She also have the powerful lung, so she did get the Toke trait of uh, the physical trait of Toke, which is really really cool. But uh, yeah, we don't really know a whole lot more about her. She's twenty nine, so she was actually older than I thought she was. So maybe we should find a marriage for her soon enough, um, because otherwise we wouldn't get any children with her. So that might be kind of the most important thing for Toke to deal with here to begin with in the game. Finding a spouse for his child. But we do have many things to consider before we're getting that far, I would say. One of them is actually establishing a house tradition. Yeah, like I have mentioned already, I'm playing with mods. I think I have around 50 mods installed right now. And one of them is called Establish House Traditions, which is a really cool one. It is a uh, event that you can open. Unfortunately, the AI do not have this option, but it is probably the only mod that I have installed where the AI do not have this. But what it does is it, it's gonna give us a couple of or a set of different things we can choose from uh, in terms of a tradition to, to choose. And those tradition is gonna give us a set of modifiers, right? So we need to kind of figure out what would Toka kind of, uh, you know, go for here. We do have Valor, so a house tradition of Valor, Pride, and Power. I think right away Toga would probably look towards Power because he's he's a warrior, he's a viking, he, he likes power, and, and powerful people tend to do well in, in life, uh, at least when we talk about the viking age, right? So let's take a look at that one. So it favors ambitious, raffle, and impatient traits. Okay. Uh, diplomacy per level of fame, plus one. Martial per level of flame, uh, fame, plus one. Natural dread, plus 20. Fellow vassals, minus five. Vassals, minus five. Intimidate vassal levy contribution, plus 10. That's an interesting one. Terrified vassal levy contribution, plus 20. So if we wanted to become somewhat of a terrifying ruler... That would probably be the one to go for. But Toge also remembers, just in the back of his mind, that this is not all about killing and going out conquering stuff. Especially not now. Now it's more about the house. It's more about family. It's more about, you know, traditions. And maybe he don't want the family of going out and trying killing people anymore. <laughs> I mean, he has, he has had his share of that in his life. So maybe he's looking for something else. What about pride? Pride is a favoring arrogant, ambitious, and wrathful trait. That sounds not too bad to him, actually. That's 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 probably more down the line of what he actually wants. A prideful family. So martial is still uh, per level of fame here, plus one. Diplomacy per stress level, plus two. Monthly piety, plus 10%. That's, that's quite a bit. Development growth plus 10 and development growth plus 20 per month. So a lot of development growth and 
prestige here. Also, cultural fascination, plus 15, could help us out because we are in foreign countries right now, per se. I mean, it is our country, but... Yeah, the culture is definitely not ours, so that might actually be good for um, for him in the short term. But is pride gonna be good in the long term? Well, that depends, I would say. <laughs> and the last one to look at is Valor. Normally, I actually, I think last time I played with this, I had a lot more options, but it all depends on his traits. So we got the three here, and that's one of the three we're gonna choose, I suppose. House Tradition Valor, so that is favors Brave, Stubborn, and Impatient traits. This favors Craven. I do not like the Craven either, so that might actually come in my favor. So, Martial per level of fame, plus one. Prowess per stress level, plus two. So, if we were to become a family with a lot of stress evolved, I don't know if that's a good idea, but we would have a lot of prowess coming from that, actually. Okay, we do have uh, pursuit, of, uh, pursuit Efficiency plus 20%, that's quite a bit, and Movement Speed plus 5%, but I think Toge, he, yeah, he do, he do think those are good things, but again, he's probably more focused on internally what can what can be good for his family especially his daughter what would be good for her and her family when she does get one i think pride is probably the one that he's looking towards the most here also the diplomacy uh, of plus two per stress level is definitely something he could consider being really solid for uh, the fam family heir down the lines the Monday Prestige is also good. Development growth could also be good. He, he's he's considered now when he's finally a count, he's definitely looking toward development rather than killing and destruction. So I think we're gonna take the house tradition pride. Which is our first decision to make. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. We also got to choose a lifestyle. I think it is very obvious what kind of lifestyle Toga got. He is a martial kind of dude and he is likely also a strategist if i may so so he could, actually we should probably go into galant because we do have the trade galant but i think he is more a strategist than he is a galant person to be honest so we will choose to go into martial even now because we also need to have in mind that this is the kind of guy he was 10 years ago and 15 years ago right so we definitely need to go into this one even if we wanted to go for something else we can't really do it because we need to role play this at least a little bit <laughs> um so I think we're going to go with the strategy focus. That seems like the most obvious choice for him to take, in my opinion. And we will take basically everything in the strategist here. Um, so the cost is barely minus 50%. That's pretty good. Uh, we can maybe, maybe make use of that. The Pantheon Tactics is probably one of the best traits or perks in the game. I will take that one. Thank you kindly. We got the Organized March. Not bad. Uh, engineer it for destruction. I mean, he has done a lot of destruction in his time, hasn't he? So we'll take that. Envelopement. Uh, man at arms efficiency. That could potentially be very, very good now, now when we are a count. Hit and run. I think, as a Viking, he's done his share of hit and runs. Living off the land. Now, he did do that while he was in Yells as a young. He definitely was probably farming quite a bit with his family while he was kind of unlanded uh, or definitely just a lowborn. So, yeah, definitely that one is pretty good. Sappers. So, this is like seed progress and stuff. Uh, I don't know how much he has done of that, but he will definitely... That's probably part of his military training, I suppose. <laughs> And then, of course, the trait, the strategist. What exactly is it actually doing? Diplomacy plus one, martial plus three, and fatal causalities plus 25%. Wow, that's a lot. And, of course, we can cross rivers and straight with, uh, with no advantage or no penalty, so to speak. So that's pretty cool. So do we have more points? We have one more point. Okay. So the thing is, do we want to be an overseer or do we want to be Galant? Hmm. I think I think because we do have the Galant trade, we will go down towards that. Um, that I, I, again, it makes most sense in terms of role playing here. So we will take the stalwart leader, which is giving us more prowess, and we can com what re reduce the risk of commanding armies. Okay, that's pretty good if we're going into a war anytime soon. Hopefully not. Actually, I am looking toward peacetime for quite a bit because any wars right now would probably be 
really bad for us, but we can uh, talk more about that later on. We have a couple of other things. We got our heir unmarried. Yeah, our daughter is unmarried. We should probably look towards that soon enough. We do not have enough knights. So that's another thing. And then we have, because again, because of mods, I have something called Omniscient here, which is giving me a lot more notifications and alerts. We also have this notification system down here, giving again an absolutely ton. Actually, I don't think I've set it up. Uh, yeah, I actually kind of have set it up how I wanted it, don't I? Uh, actually, no. I think we want pretty much all the not notifications we can in terms of our even extended family here. We want pregnancy as well. We want everything we can in terms of that. What is that? That is all characters of my dynasty. We probably would like to see the birth of our dynasties. And we would also see like to see marriages... Uh, definitely wars would be a good thing. Deaths? Yeah, probably so. Uh, faith and culture conversions? Uh, definitely also. Like like I said, I want to see pretty much everything I can. Titles? Sure, if they get a title, I want to see it. Pregnancies? Probably not that important. Births are probably more important than anything. Uh, that is pretty cool. What is that? Close family? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So like I said, more newsfeed is good for role-playing, so... Definitely want that in there. So that is part of what we are also doing. Um, Cartiers can be converted, right? I do have the mod called uh, Demand Conversion. That means, and, and I did only, I actually only considered taking this because I knew I would go into a county where everyone else would be non-Catholics. And we are Catholic, right? We are a Catholic character. And I think we will demand a complete conversion of everyone in our county to Catholics. I mean, why wouldn't? I mean, if they don't want to be Catholics, get out of here, right? That's kind of how I'm seeing it. And that's probably also how Tog is seeing it. So what we can do here is actually go in and say demand conversion. We do only have three cutiers, which is interesting. But we can send rid of a request. And when we hit the on pause, we, uh, we, we will see them convert directly. We also have a lot of courtiers who can get married. And now that might actually be a very, very good thing for us to do. Now, all of them are, of course, if we just look at this guy or girl, Miroslav here is, of course, uh, Slovianskian. Well, not for long, uh, <laughs> but also Polabian. Actually, there was only three courtiers, but we see a lot more courtiers here. Maybe some of them are actually Catholic. Could be, but she's not, and she also doesn't like us, or we and we don't like her. But it is what it is when you take over a county uh, outside your own, uh, you know, uh, realm, so to speak. But uh, what we could do is find some kind of Danish person for her, like this guy who, and actually marry her off, force them into a marriage. Yes, and by doing that, we could actually make sure that we are getting more Danish people in our court. I feel like that's pretty cool. Actually, I'm not sure if that's going to happen when it is another lowborn. You know what? I'm up for the um, figuring out this. So, actually, we need to check out how... Oh, she's really terrible. Maybe we don't want to do it with her. Maybe we will find someone else. I'll probably go through... I, I, I just want to tell you that I will do stuff like this. You know, go in and actually look at our courtiers and then make sure that we are marrying them off to someone where we can maybe get more Danish people, maybe some Germans, maybe some, you know, whatever, uh, you know, maybe some other uh, Swedish, Norwegians or something in that in our courtiers. So we don't, so we have a more mixed courtier kind of setup, right? But for now, just uh, looking at it here. And then we can, of course, marry off our daughter. We'll do that soon enough. Right now, I'm just looking through stuff. And also, this is probably, you know, if Torga was sitting in his castle right now, he was probably going through things that was important to do. And we need to figure out what is the most important thing to do and do them first. And that is what we're doing right now, right? You can hire a court physician. Uh, well, I guess Torga is going to look at his money and think, ah, that's probably not great to do right now we only have 27 and we don't know if we're gonna need money for anything else so i'm gonna go with nah probably not for now then we got social reports i'm not sure what that is so okay so the re ah okay so the social report is like telling us that relations we can improve on that is really cool huh 
So he kind of get uh, maybe his spy master or something like that. We don't even know who our spy master is yet. He's kind of giving us information here on who doesn't like us, and maybe we should improve some of their opinion of them. Uh, cool. We will get um, a closer look at that later on. G G what is that? A dis dis is visiting your court. So someone is visiting our court at the moment. Some Catholic Polobian guy that we could maybe marry or something. I don't know. Maybe he would stay if we married him off. But anyway, not very important. That, on the other hand, that we're not endorsed by our uh, bishop. That is a problem. Now, he, wow, he really doesn't like us. We don't really like him either. Is he any good? Yeah, he's actually quite good. He got 17 in learning and also a mastermind philosopher. I think first order of business is probably making him like us a little bit more. He is Italian. Interesting. Huh. Why does he not like us? Short reign. That makes sense. And also cultural acceptance is minus 23. That makes sense as well. I guess we will try and sway our... Well... For the first time, our <laughs> counselor, or not a counselor, our bishop here, start scheming against him. So that's actually another thing we are doing right off the bat here. Can I move this? Yes, I definitely can. So let's take a look at the decisions here. Do we have anything we want to do? We can convert to the local culture. No, nope, we're Danish and we're going to stay Danish. Uh, we can open the fam family annals. Uh, I think I've already went through that and done that. That's the uh, kind of things we have here. So when we do have this person do not actually have it. That's interesting. Why does she not have that trait? She should have it. Maybe she will get it when we unpause the game. I need to figure that one out. But that's very important to see. Maybe we can actually uh, interact with the current Crocnolis and make your demands. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, that is pretty good. So mark close family members. Yes. Mark extended family members. Absolutely. And also mark super extended family members. Yes, we will do that. Is there anything else we can do here? No, that's about it. So it now, I think she will have it. Yeah. Close family member. Cool. So that's a way to kind of figure out who is who. I mean, in hundreds of years, we we, we kind of have to... Uh, if there is someone like like in Italy or something that all of a sudden pops up and is a, you know, far related kind of member, we, we then know it because of this fame trait. And, and I feel like that's really cool for the sake of role playing, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, we can close that again. That's all good. Right. Let's take a closer look at the realm itself, actually. So we are, of course, the county of Lübeck. And I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of interesting things in here to talk about. We do have two empty holdings. Kilonia? I think that's Kiel, actually. Yeah, that's probably Kiel in Rio. Interesting. We do not have any vassals. And the succession is uh, down to our daughter, Ose. Uh, Togestetter. Which is... Not a name that I actually decided on because they were generated by the game, which is okay for me. I, I mean, I'm fine. I don't need to create all of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. And we do have Confederate Partition, Male Preference. So, not... I, I would like another heir, to be honest, but she's not bad. Like, she do have the powerful lungs and she's not a bad character, right? We don't know her numbers yet, but that, that will come later on. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Military-wise, oh, look at that. We actually do have some Vikman. Ha. Huh. That is probably the 200 soldiers that helped him out to get Lubick in the first place, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's probably the Vikings. That is probably the Vikings that helped him out to get it. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. We do not have any knights. Oh, well, actually, we do. We just, again, need to unpause the game before we actually see them in here. Nice. But all of them are, of course not Danish, so we can't really trust them that much. Minus 100. Bretislav. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Mercenaries. Uh, there's a lot of mercenaries in here. Also, the council. Probably the most important one to actually look at right now. Uh, so, we have our bishop. We have seen him. Of course, our wife is uh, the countess. Then we got a counselor here called Casper. Okay, um, he's a 17-year-old who really hates us, and we really hate him, but we probably won't have anyone better for now. Let's actually check that out. Is there anyone better? Nope, there is no one better. 
There is no one better, but uh, uh, I mean, it is a problem. Is, this is a problem that we have to deal with. I wish I could just take one of my Vikmen and put in here, but none of our Vikmen is knights or playable characters or even lowborn characters. They're just soldiers. <laughs> we also have uh, Bretislav, nine in stewardship. Okay, all right. Anyone else that is better? Nope, nope. And uh, yeah, that's probably how it's gonna be for now. <laughs> This is actually... 14 is pretty good here in Marshall. I'm not too uh, concerned about that one. I am concerned that he doesn't like us. At least our spy master doesn't hate us, which is uh, nice. And she also got 15, so that's actually Maria Obrodiden. Interesting name. Alright. I mean, she's pretty good. She's probably the best we could possibly have anyway. So I think uh, we are okay when it comes to the council. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it, except from them hating us, but that is what it is. Now, there is actually something I want to do straight off the bat here, and that is promoting the culture. Because right now, it's Polabian, and we want to make it Danish. So, six years it's gonna take to uh, change that. And actually, in the game rules, I have actually said it to both for uh, us and the AI to be a bit faster to change. I always hated how long it took. So I've changed it to be a bit faster to both convert faith and also cultures. I, I just hate how long it took. It, I think it, it took ages, right? Even, even with it being faster, six years is still quite a bit of time to spend for uh, converting. But I mean, it's more for the sake of me hating it than it is for role-playing because if it was role-playing it would take way longer to convert a culture in a county but yeah that's just one of my small kinds of things that i don't really like and the other thing is probably one to convert the cult uh, the um convert the faith of well because it is actually right now slovanskia or slovanska pravada and we want to move into a more catholic kind of county if we could that only take two years Interesting. I don't know why this takes two years and this takes six years, but maybe also his learning has something to do with it and maybe a couple of other things. I don't know, but there we go. That should help us out when that happens. But uh, actually, do we have full control of our county? We, we do. We do. Oh, right. Another thing that I haven't mentioned is, of course, the mod called Dynamic Trade Routes, I think it's called. And it is kind of giving us a more... what What is the word I'm looking for here? Balanced. A more balanced kind of economy system in the game, right? And uh, you don't really have to do anything with it. There is a couple of events. So there is a lot of cool things that can happen with it. And you can see all the trade things here. Seems like we have a good amount of timber, which can be traded with other places. And we can make trade routes with other places, which is so cool. We also have a good amount of wool. Wow, we got a lot of grain. Holy moly, Lübeck is crazy with grain. Jesus, I didn't even know this. That's crazy. Wow, look at all these horses as well. We do Oh, wow, we do have a Stala. So we actually produce horses. Nice. I think that's the first time I've ever seen this. When I'm playing with it, that is. I have seen. I mean, I played with this mod before, but I don't think I've seen a county tile this good before from the get-go. That is crazy. We also have silver. We do not have a mint. We can create our own uh, uh, coins and stuff. We don't have that. Actually, can we open a mint? It costs 150 and 150 in prestige as well. We will probably do that. Because it will create a lot of prestige, it will create a lot of coinage, and just a lot of good things coming from having a mint and using our silver that way. I think that's something we can definitely look forward to. But yeah, kind of the situation here in Lübeck is looking really solid. Except from, of course, it not being of our culture, but it is what it is. We also have 23,000 people, or the population is 23,000, which is also a cool little detail. We have 600, no, 820 soldiers, where 200 of them is Vikman. See, we got piety of 100, a lot of prestige, 600 prestige, and only 27 gold. So we are, we are kind of poor, but, I mean, we just took over the castle. This is basically the gold coins we found in the castle, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Very, very nice. Oh, and look at that. We have a small harbor. We have a tenants. So we got extra levies from that. 
wooden barracks, same deal. And also a bastion. So it will be a little bit hard to actually get in and take our fort. Because our fort level is plus one and also the garrison is plus 150. Very nice indeed. Wow. And we do, we could be able to make a dodgy building if we control the dodgy in... What is the dodgy actually down here? I don't even know. Holstein, of course. Yeah, if we controlled Holstein as a total, we could also create a new building in there. But, eh, I mean, that would mean that we would have to take it off the hands of the prince, because he's kind of holding Threstmarschen, or Threstmischen. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, actually. But, uh, yeah, that might be something we want to do later on. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, guys, I... Um I, I kind of think we need to hit the on pause here, because otherwise there is a couple of things we can't really do. And I think we have... I don't think there is anything else we need to do as of now, but in two days' time... Let's just actually hit it and just let time pass for two days, because I think a couple of things will happen by doing that. One of them is probably that we will be able to see the numbers here from our wife. So she got 22 in learning, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at our child... 1172965. Alright, I'm pretty cool with that. Now, now when we know that, can we actually can we do anything with her? Well, we can sway her, but that's not really important to do. We can gift an animal? <laughs> what? Really? We have an animal in our uh, do we have artifacts? We do. We actually have two artifacts. Oh wow, of course, of course we do. We we are trading horses. We we do have a horse of our own, of course we do. So we got a uh, Fallhofnir and a Achvach. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but uh, I'm gonna go with that. This one is minus one in martial, but it's giving us prowess. Okay, and raiding speed. What about this one? Advantage in Tiger, but all okay. So it doesn't give us any minuses anywhere. I mean, are we gonna go raid anywhere? I mean, we are a Viking, but I don't think Togger is, uh, especially not right now, just after he has seized down this castle, taking it over two days ago only. I don't think he's going out raiding anytime soon. So let's just put on this quality warhorse, a Valhöfnir. Uh, maybe that's its name. I think it's actually its name. Eight years old. Cool. That's nice. We'll put that on, and uh, that's pretty good. So I think, <clears throat> in terms of what we should do right now, is probably looking toward finding a spouse for Ose, our child, of course. Now, there is a couple of things we need to worry about in terms of uh, that when he's thinking about a marriage here, he also has to think about alliances, he has to think about uh, prestige, he has to think about what kind of man he's gonna find for her and I think the first thing he would definitely look toward is a matrilineal marriage that's ba that's basically 100% guaranteed that he would not do anything other than a matrilineal marriage right so we can tick that off right away what he would like to find is someone Danish now we can actually sort it out. I mean, he would go out. He would he would search for that himself. If if we were to be honest about it, right? He would definitely search for that as the first thing. So let's see if there is anyone. Uh, let's see, dynasty, ruler, alliances, sexuality, trait, culture, right? Let's go by Danes. We do have a couple that we could actually get. Okay, that's good. No, is any of them not lowborn? <laughs> okay, we do have a couple that is not lowborn. Now, the next thing he would be wondering about, could we get any alliance going? We do have an alliance here, maybe with the city of Obenro. He would probably know the mayor of Josef here. He would probably know the mayor, because he would be the guy that would take over from us after we have left Obenro. So that might be an ideal one. He only got 119 soldiers left, so... Mm, maybe not. Maybe not. City of Copenhagen, or Copenhagen here. Kupmanhafen, or whatever it's called. He's also comely. Huh. Another thing we could look for is a really good knight. But I think more than anything, it's probably important to find someone who got a, you know, just a few soldiers. Get an alliance going. But the, here's the thing, they, the, all of these are barons, right? So maybe, 
As much as I or Toge would like to find someone Danish, maybe he would also rather go for someone who could give him a good alliance, because we don't know what's gonna happen here when we hit the on pause again. Denmark could attack us, Valicia could attack us, the Holy Roman Empire could attack us, anyone could attack us. We are not strong on, on our own right now. Yeah, we do have 1,000 soldiers now, after two days of recruitment, apparently. But uh, yeah, it might not work out. So let's just take a look at the absolute strongest we could get here. So let's uh, let's go up here and say some of all skill. No, Allianz power. So the most powerful was actually the one on top already. And Norman, isn't that Norman? Isn't that like in France or something like that? I don't actually know where this is. Norman, where is this? Where is he? Oh, it's way down in Italy. Ah, where is he exactly? <clears throat> Why can't I see this? This is annoying me a little bit. Can we move back here? Click on this. Yeah, it is in the southern part of Italy. So he's the strongest one we could potentially get. Yeah, not only is it very far away, so the Allianz wouldn't really mean anything. We need to find someone closer related to us. Uh, so let's just, uh, you know, tap over a couple here just to maybe figure out if there is anyone in the area that could be a potential candidate. How far away is that? No. Hmm. It seems like most of them are like really far away. Like really, really far away. Okay. That's a little bit silly to me. Honestly, I feel like you, you wouldn't, as a new count, you wouldn't go that far out. <laughs> you wouldn't go that far out. But maybe there's no one near us, actually. Oh. We do have one here. How, how strong is he? See, see, that's the problem, right? This guy is not very powerful. <clears throat> 487 is... That's nothing. That's basically nothing. We want someone more powerful than ourselves. And the only one... The only ones that we have here... Is... Italians? Hungarians? Romanians? Yeah. It, that's, that's not gonna work. So I guess we will marry... For maybe, maybe, maybe we want to marry. Now, the, the problem is, of course, the matrilineal here. So actually, that, that might actually be a really good marriage. 1,300 soldiers, but I don't, I think we're going to go for traits instead. And maybe try and find someone who could give her or give our grandchildren some traits instead. We do have one here. 33-year-old, handsome. Huh? Okay. Don't mind that. He's Scots. Okay. And it would actually give us an alliance with this place, which is... Oh, that's not bad at all. Northampton or Northampton. What is that called? I don't remember exactly how you pronounce that. Um, yeah, that that's actually... That's not bad at all. The Fair. Donald the Fair. Donkeld. And... I believe he would actually move towards our unless he's no he's not he's not the he's not sitting on the throne over here or the count he's not a count he's just a sibling to him ah and we see our kingdom of Scotland wow we would have claims to the kingdom of Scotland through him that sounds pretty dang good to me I mean, do we find do can we find a better marriage than this? I mean, they are not that far away from us. By sea, they would probably get to us in time to help us out. You know what? I feel like this is a brilliant marriage to us. Even minus 100 for him and 300 for uh, our daughter. 715 is not bad at all. And it is matrilineal, so it will be, you know, child of our dynasty. I feel like this is... How good is he in combat? Also 14 prowess. He is sadistic. Ambitious, which is fine by me. And he is cynical. So, I don't know about the sadistic trait. That's a bit... You know, but... Um, the rest of it is fantastic for us. Also, he will become one of our knights. I like it. I'll send this... I feel like this is really, really good. And also gaining gaining a bit of influence in Scotland. 
uh, or in England uh, for this matter. Uh, but that, yeah, I feel like this is actually a solid, solid, solid choice. That is so cool. Anyway, guys, I think I think um, I think we're gonna end the episode on that actually, uh, marrying off or at least trying to marry off our daughter because I don't want to make the episode way too long. I want to you know control it, control myself just slightly. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this first episode with uh, the dynasty of Elvin, and uh, if you did, leave a thumbs up. Um, or a like, so to speak, and I'll see you around next time.